Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be discussing the arteries of the thoracic wall. It's important to shift your focus to the fact that this is the thoracic wall. We are not just talking about the vessels of the thoracic cavity because if we were talking about the cavity, we'll be talking about the contents that are lying within it. We are talking about those arteries only that are running in the boundaries of the thorax, meaning the covering of the thorax, which are the ribs, the intercostal spaces, and the bones. So in the thoracic wall come a couple of arteries, and these are the posterior intercostal arteries, the anterior intercostal arteries, and the most important, internal thoracic artery. Today we will begin the discussion of arteries with the posterior intercostal arteries. The posterior intercostal arteries are 11 in number, so there are about 11 posterior intercostal arteries, all right? Okay, so PIA and the AIA, which are the anterior intercostal arteries, these are like nine in number. Why? Because anterior intercostal. As I told you earlier, the anterior intercostal spaces are nine in number and the posterior intercostal spaces are 11 in number, hence the number of the arteries. However, in the anterior intercostal arteries, nine multiplied by two as every intercostal space has two anterior intercostal arteries. Now let's begin the discussion of the posterior intercostal arteries in depth. Before I even begin the origin of the posterior intercostal artery, it's important that you know that the heart basically gives origin to a very important vessel called the aorta. So the aorta has three parts. It has an ascending part where the blood is ascending. Then it has an arch. This is the arch. And then it has a descending part, all right? Descending means the blood is going down, all right? So there are three parts of the aorta. The aorta on the right and the left side gives different types of branches. However, at the end of the day, the right subclavian, left subclavian have to be formed. Subclavian arteries both give the costocervical trunk. The costocervical trunk further gives the superior intercostal artery on either side and this artery is responsible for giving your first and second posterior intercostal arteries and the rest of the 11 artery rest of the nine intercostal arteries are derived from the descending aorta as we all know the aorta is lying on the uh, left side because the heart lies on the your left side hence the right posterior intercostal arteries are longer than the left and each posterior intercostal artery has to run within the intercostal spaces that are 11 posteriorly lying clung onto the ribs of the posterior thoracic wall and where do they lie on the rib it's pretty simple i told you that there was a costal groove where these arteries are specifically lying. So now that we know the origin of the posterior intercostal arteries, what happens next? These arteries run in the costal groove of each rib, which had a costal groove in its lower part. In the costal groove, it runs in the relation of, as I mentioned earlier, the VAN. The artery lies right in the middle of these two. So you can say in the costal groove, it runs with having superior relation to the posterior intercostal vein and having inferiorly it has the intercostal nerve and finally how it terminates is by ending at the level of costochondral junction the junction where the rib becomes the cartilage that junction is known as the costochondral junction and that is where the posterior intercostal artery that was coming from the posterior part all the way it goes anteriorly and where the costochondral junction comes it ends by anastomosing with the anterior intercostal artery. It has a couple of branches, for example, some muscular branches to give off the muscles of your thoracic wall and a dorsal branch to supply the back, a collateral branch that is running together with the posterior intercostal artery. Each uh, posterior intercostal artery has a collateral branch that eventually has to uh, anastomose with the other in anterior intercostal artery. As I mentioned, there are pairs of anterior intercostal arteries. Moreover, there are mammary branches and the mammary branches of the second, third and fourth arteries, if you remember, they supply the mammary gland or the breast. And finally, the right bronchial artery. So here's the termination of the posterior intercostal artery 
However, now we will begin the discussion of the anterior intercostal artery. So we know what's happening from back to the front. Now let's talk about how the anterior intercostal artery has to come so we can complete our anastomosis between these two. So now begins the discussion of anterior intercostal arteries. There are nine spaces anteriorly, hence there are nine pairs of anterior intercostal arteries in each space. So these begin from the lateral border of the sternum and they go up to the costochondral junction and at the costochondral junction they have to anastomose with the posterior intercostal artery. So how do they originate? In the upper six intercostal spaces the pairs of anterior intercostal arteries arise from the internal thoracic artery while in the lower spaces which are the last three spaces seventh eighth and ninth spaces the pairs arise from the branch of the internal thoracic artery called the musculophrenic artery and once they arise they run up to the costochondral junction where they terminate by anastomosing with their corresponding posterior intercostal artery and its collateral branch. So that was all about the anterior intercostal artery. Let's begin the discussion of the internal thoracic artery in the next video. So for now, thank you so much for watching.